Hi, I'm Don. Today we're painting this grim called Orc Miniature and we're painting mostly the armor part. So we're painting rusted orc armor today. I'll show you the painting of the armor. However, I'll talk about the transition or the flip-flopping of painting with acrylics and painting with oil paints. So I feel they're kind of the same or basically I kind of forced like oil paints to paint like how I paint with acrylics. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. However, this channel won't be possible without the support of my patrons. As usual, the longer tutorial version of this video is up at Patreon. So do consider being a patron because you get a ton of stuff a ton of tutorials and even PDF painting guides. So painting with very opaque Vallejo model colors for the underpainting like this one and for detail painting like small like bones and skeletons and basically details of a miniature is very crucial. I mean, you really need those very opaque paints for painting details and underpainting. However, if you've been subscribed to this channel, especially almost a couple of years now wherein I'm focused on miniature painting, you'll notice that I like painting with translucency, with a bit more transparency. I love inks and also I use a lot of mediums to add transparency to very opaque paints. I usually call my painting sketch and glaze wherein I sketch basically block areas of the base colors. I usually paint with darker base colors and then do a two-tone like base colors, paint a lighter base color on top of the darker base color and then eventually do glazes to refine the whole painting or the whole sketching. My painting in general is practically slop chop, especially when I do the underpainting via dry brushing. So I'm not really sure what is the requirement to become like to be called slop chop, but I do think like dry brushing the underpainting is one of the requirements. So once in a while I do slop chop, it may be like slop chop with acrylics and the past I think couple of videos I did slop chop with acrylics and then oil paints. What makes slop chop or even the underpainting very crucial to killing procrastination like killing procrastination meaning sometimes you look at the model and you think too much on how to paint that model and just painting burnt umber or dark sea blue or whatsoever darker base colors on the model will make you jumpstart, will basically jumpstart the painting or the project. So this is one of the reasons I think why slop chop is very famous because just dry brushing dark gray and eventually dry brushing lighter grays or even white will make you feel good that you kind of started the project really well and then it's just a matter of painting translucent or transparent paints like inks and contrast paints or even oil paints on top of your underpainting. You see in the video now that we're basically sketching, well not really sketching, we're done with the sketching of the non-metallic metal armor and then we're practically just applying oil glazes with some oil paints. Although I took up fine arts back in college, oil paints are not really nostalgic for me because honestly I can't afford them when I was a student so I'm mostly like a watercolor artist when I was a student and especially when I was younger because watercolor are basically super cheap you could produce good portraits with cheaper-ish watercolors painting with watercolor since I was 12 years old and that's like more than three decades ago makes me like to paint with transparencies makes me like to build up translucent like paints and colors so if you've like been following my youtube channel 
Whenever I paint with Vallejos, not the details but the main colors, I tend to like add a lot of medium and of course a bit of water to thin down the paint so that I have a semi-transparent paint and I build up the colors from there. At the latter part of the year though, last year, I received a batch of cuttlefish colors. These paints, acrylic paints, are pre-glazed paints. Thus, my painting became a bit more efficient with cuttlefish colors. Because again, I like building up like colors, layering them with translucency or transparency. I also like inks. And basically, painting in this way creates a bit more depth in my opinion. Now you may ask, you might ask, why I can transition to oil painting a bit easier or seemingly easier. It's basically I'm forcing the oil paints to paint like how I paint with acrylics. Notice in the video, especially my mixing on my red dress glass palette, I kinda add a bit more thinner. I use Gamsol. And I add a bit more thinner to my oil paint so that I have more transparency. Although I do not add too much because I don't want wash consistency. So I aim to have more transparency to my oil paints but still have pretty good coverage. By adding a bit more thinner, basically gamsol to my oil paints they dry faster than usual you cannot use of course linseed oil and stuff like that because it's not perfect it's not fit for miniature painting because the oil paint layers will dry in like a week or two and that's too long unless you're like painting a huge model or you're really taking your time blending all those colors on the miniature. But I do not recommend that. I highly recommend using Gamsol to speed up the drying time. So since I thin the oil paints like almost the same consistency when I paint with Vallejos or even with Cuttlefish, I have semi-translucent paints and I like building up layers of these oil paints on top of each other. However, you have to have like like you have to have a nice process. You see in the video I'm painting the loincloth before flipping back to painting the armor because I want that extra time of painting the loincloth. It's, it's like a good time to let dry the previous colors on the other parts of the model. Oils are well known as very good for washes, especially in the miniature painting world. But you'll notice with my oil painting that I don't really do washes. I'm not a fan of like oil washes. They're really great but i don't like see like the advantage because cleaning up will make you rub the previous layers and thus it's not really optimal it's not as efficient for me so i like painting oils like i paint with acrylics just a bit more thinner so that it dries faster so basically, painting with oils is similar to painting with acrylics. You kind of force the medium to paint or work for you and you will have a really nice or really fun time painting your miniature. Now we are about done, it's time for our golden lemon reveal. However, before our golden lemon reveal, I just want to thank all my patrons again because without them, this channel won't be possible. Now it's time for our golden lemon reveal. So basically, you saw in this video that I kind of build up and stippled created texture with oil paints on the armor parts. However, initially, we use acrylics, Vallejos to sketch where we think the highlights of the armors will be. And then we stippled added texture and colors and rust and verdigris effects on the armor. To finish up the armor, we use a bit of light gray to like as a pre-highlight color to identify where again the highlights would fall on top of the rust and verdigris effects. And to finish off the armor, we use final white highlights that we kind of blended with a clean brush so that it's not too stark and won't really affect the underlying layers too much. I hope you like this video guys. Again, the longer version is up at Patreon. That's it, Pansit.